Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. For this day. Hallelujah. For this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice. Hallelujah. And we're glad. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you for watching over us. Hallelujah. We thank you for being in your presence today. Hallelujah. We thank you for counting us worthy this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. For your loving kindness. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. We have so much to be thankful for. Hallelujah. We thank you for keeping us, God. For keeping our minds, God. We thank you, God. For keeping us in our spirits, God. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we worship you. Hallelujah. Father, we ask, hallelujah. We surrender our service to you today, Father. We ask, Father, that you would just have your way. Hallelujah. We come to you this morning. Hallelujah. Asking that you forgive us, God. Forgive us for all of our sins, God. Anything in word, anything in deed, hallelujah. Anything in thought, hallelujah. We ask for forgiveness this morning, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we worship you, hallelujah. We pray, oh God, hallelujah, that you would have your way in our service, hallelujah. We pray for every individual this morning, God, that you would give them the desires of their heart, that you would do what you want to do, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. We pray that none would leave here the same, hallelujah. Send your anointing, Father. Rest upon each and every last one of us. Hallelujah. We pray for those that are watching, God. We pray that you will go into the homes of your people, God. We pray that you would deliver. We pray that you would heal. We pray that you would set free. Hallelujah. Have your way this morning, Father. We yield ourselves to you. Hallelujah. We yield our minds. We yield our hearts. Have your way this morning, Jesus. Have your way this morning, Jesus. We bind the hand of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus against the enemy. Anything that will come in to distract, anything that will come in to deter, we plead the blood of Jesus this morning. Father, we ask that you would have your way, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the word this morning, that the word would fall on good ground, that it would do what you set it out to do, Father, in the name of Jesus. Anoint the minister fresh this morning, in the name of Jesus. Father, send your anointing, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Remember our praise team, God. Anoint them this morning, God. Anoint them this morning, God. As they usher the people into your presence, anoint them this morning, Father. Anoint the musicians this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we praise and we thank you, God. We praise and we thank you, God. Remember our pastor this morning, God. Continue to bless him. Continue to anoint him. Continue to direct him. Continue to cover him with your blood, Father. In the name of Jesus, remember our first lady, God. Cover her in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you, hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you, hallelujah. Remember our sick God. Touch him as only you can, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you, hallelujah. Touch Deacon Johnson, God. Touch him from the crown of his head, Father, to the sole of his feet, God. Bless him as only you can, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Have your way, Father. Save today, God. Deliver today, God. We came a backslider today, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, move by your power. Move by your might. Move by your power. Move by your might. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Oh, God, we thank you. God, we love you this morning. Hallelujah. We love you this morning. Hallelujah. Rain on us, God. Rain on us this morning, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Father. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. God, we give you the worship. 
we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we praise you in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Give them the praise, hallelujah. Give them some praise, hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's continue to worship him and lift up his name. Let's stay in that realm of praise and worship. We're going to prepare our minds and open up our hearts to receive a blessing from God. If you believe that, I need you to lift up your hands and lift up a Shabbat for the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus.
say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, say, come on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I call your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I call your name. I'll call him Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I call your name. Come on, name. jump with me. What? Come on. Let's raise him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I call your oh, name, help me, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I call your name, say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I call your name, say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I call your name, everybody put your hands together. That's the way we praise Him with an exuberant praise. Does anybody got the victory? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Let's give him glory. Hallelujah. 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 That's the highest praise we could give him. He's worthy of our praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say something happens when I call on his name. You ever been in trouble when you was a kid and you call out your mama name and she come running? Or you call out your daddy name, he comes running? Hallelujah. If you call on the name of Jesus this morning, I don't think he gonna just sit there. I think he gonna run to you. Because he's everywhere at all times, but the Bible says, let us magnify him together. And if we magnify him together, he will inhabit the praises of his people, which means that Jesus makes his abode with us. And if he's with us, I don't care what the enemy's trying to do. If Jesus is with us and he's inside of us and living through us, we could call on his name when the enemy hits us with a sickness report. We could call on his name when the enemy hits our finances. We could call on his name when the enemy tries to bring confusion. We could say, Jesus! Oh, y'all ain't calling his name. Y'all ain't calling his name, y'all. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I came from old school church where we used to get together and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. We didn't know what else to say. We didn't know what else to do. We tried to figure it out all by ourselves. But we got to a place where we said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And he would heal people's bodies. And he would deliver people. And he would save people. And he would lift people. And he would make ways out of no way. Look at your neighbor say, I'm ready for a miracle. God say he gonna do it. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Look at, look at somebody else say, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready for what God promised me. I'm ready for what he said. Jesus, 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 
church you can be seated if you can in the presence of our holy father i'm on vacation this morning so i get to cut up a little extra minister deweese preaching this morning we getting ready to hit that road go down to florida but i said i'm gonna hit the church first we it would have been easy to stay in my bed this morning say you know i'm just gonna take five no i said i said i got to get to the house of god anybody been through something over the last week is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. Should have been another way this week, but you are here. I'm out, God. Hallelujah. Help me, Lord. And if it was up to the enemy, we wouldn't even be here. But the grace of God, the mercies of God, the faithfulness of God, the glory of God kept us. He is a keeper. He is a keeper. He knows how to keep us from falling. And even when we fall, he knows how to pick us up. Look at somebody say, he picked me up, he picked me up. 
out of a horrible pit, out of a muck and miry clay. He picked me up. He delivered me. All right. I'm just a little excited, y'all. Y'all can be seated. I don't know why y'all standing up. But that's how I make me preach. I ain't here to preach. Welcome to First Fruits Community Church. This is a church where we are loving God <laughs> and we are loving people. Are, is anybody as excited as I am? Holy Jesus, I feel so good. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We honor the spirit of the Lord in this house and we thank God for our first lady in her absence. I believe she is actually on her way. Amen. But you know how it goes when you're preparing for vacation. Uh, all the hundreds of bags that ladies pack. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. All the luggage we have to pack. I better watch out. I don't want to get in no trouble up here. But uh, no, she, she, I think they're they heading here. So we thank God for them. We praise God for all of our ministers, elders, deacons, the men, the women of God, everybody in the house of the Lord. All of our online viewers, thank you for joining in and receiving the word and sharing and touching other people's hearts. Amen. I remember during the pandemic, in the height of it, man, we did better during the pandemic sometimes as far as reaching people online because we engaged with these people online. So we got people watching us from the UK this morning. We praise God for all over, all, over, all the way over the seas in the United Kingdom. Man, we got people in Detroit that are faithful. We got people all over. The, you'd be surprised how many people uh, First Fruits Community Church is reaching. It, it kind of blows my mind sometimes when I see some of the uh, statistics and stuff online and, and some of the stories and messages I get via email and text messages. It's just beautiful to know that the gospel is doing the work. And that's what we're here to do is to preach this word because the word is what changes us. Amen. Uh, is there anybody here that's a first time guest this morning? Just wave your hand. We ain't going to make you do jumping jacks or nothing. But yeah, amen. So let's put our hands together for our first time guests. We don't call you visitors. You are guests because you're welcome here and uh, always welcome back. And we just hope that you enjoy uh, our robust, radical, <laughs> energetic services, you know, uh, because I just believe we got to serve the Lord with gladness, amen, and we come to his presence with singing because we know that he is the Lord, he is our God. It's him that made us, not we ourselves. So, so we are his sheep of his pasture, so we enter into his courts with thanksgiving, and we come in here with praise, and we're just thankful to him, and we bless his name every time we get together. So we're just so glad all of you are here this morning, amen, in Jesus' name. Uh, this Wednesday night, I have a special treat for you, for all of you that will be pushing your way and pressing your way, who aren't working and, and can get here at 6.30 for prayer, uh, because at 7 p.m., Sister April Cooper, come up here. I want to see her face real good. She's been, she been praying and getting a word from the Lord. Uh, Sister April Cooper is going to be teaching this Wednesday night. Amen. So, so what I want you to do, I, want, I, I won't get jealous if more of you are here with her than, than when I'm out here on a Wednesday. So Pat, just make me a little jealous, and that's good. That's a good jealousy. We get out here and support her, and, and I know God's going to use her in Jesus' name uh, to teach our house and bless our house. Amen? Amen. It was funny because I know she don't mind me sharing this. When I called, the Lord put her in my spirit for this coming Wednesday, right? And uh, when I reached out, she said, oh, my gosh, the Lord gave me a dream about this. The Lord showed me this. I said, amen, amen, so it is secured and done. It'll be, whatever she's going to give you is going to be really good. And I know I'm going to be in Orlando, but I'm going to be chiming in. I'll be, I'll be chiming in and, and, and celebrating that word, amen. We just thank God for everything. This Sunday coming, somebody say this coming Sunday, this coming Sunday. from 2 p.m. until 7 p.m. You ain't got to say all that, but, but, but from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., Gospel Fest, amen, is taking place down at the convention center uh, the Coliseum down there in North Charleston. So make sure, if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, get them uh, through Eventbrite. Uh, if you have any questions, Elder Washington and Lady Creola Washington, the founders of Project Love, the ones who put on Gospel Fest every year, um, they're the ones that you need to go to for the, with the questions. They got, they got you covered. There's some, there's some flyers out here. You could take it, pass the word around. But uh, there's going to be a lot of different people out there singing, choirs and groups. And, and uh, I was watching an old Project Love or Gospel Fest video from way back in the days with uh, Elder uh, Minister Richard Washington and his dad playing, uh, what do you call it, the Hawaiian guitar? So, oh, man, y'all. That made me want to go get a Hawaiian guitar last night. And I'm like, wow, sounds like that old bluegrass music I used to listen to. Y'all know about that. But it's like, <laughs> boy, look here. That man had a churchy sound to it. I was like, oh, Lord. And I said, man, we need a Hawaiian guitar up in here, Brother Rodney. We're going to put, put, put your ears to the ground and find somebody got a Hawaiian guitar. Y'all think y'all see me shout? Wait, bring a Hawaiian guitar in here. I will bring my banjo. 
I have a banjo, y'all. I have my grandpa's banjo, and I can play a little bit of the Blood Prevails on it. So don't test me. Don't try me. I went, ding, 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 ding. Boy, we're going to have some real cack a church. Everybody be like, we ain't never had church like this. That's all right. We're going to strum on the banjo and shout at the same time. <laughs> y'all think I'm playing. Okay, watch, 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 watch. I might bring it next Sunday when I come. All right, anyway, just getting you laughing. Listen, we like, we like to come in here and have a good time, too. You all right? We go through so much. Uh, as saints of God throughout the week. And so it's good to get in here. Laughter is medicine for the soul. And it's just a blessing to just be able to come in here and release a little bit of that uh, into the air and just uh, be filled with the joy of the Lord. Amen. So keep that same laughter because we're going into offering time. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you laughing. That's good. <clears throat> Laugh while you give. No, but no, it's a blessing to give, right? Because God blesses what? A cheerful giver, right? Amen. So the way we give here is we got a couple of ways. There's some envelopes in your seats in front of you. Uh, so if you have cash or check, you can, uh, you can go ahead and use that. Or you could text FFCC to the number right here on the screen, uh, 833-359-9900. You'll get a link to your phone. Just click it, and it's super secure. You can use that. We've been using it for almost eight years. Really great company you can use uh, to give securely. But uh, with your seed in your hand, I want you to stand up on your feet. Uh, and and uh, my wife and I had a good – we had a conversation around giving. I don't know where it even spurred from or started from. It was a really good conversation. And know what she said. Now, I'm like, this is what the first lady said, and I agreed with her. She's like, long are the days, long gone are the days, let me say that, uh, where, where, where people really don't have to give. Now, I'm not saying because there could be one person in here kind of really, really going through don't have to give. But long are the days. If you could buy McDonald's all week long or Chick-fil-A yeah. or DoorDash. Yeah then that means we got some type of income resources that when we prioritize God first. Why is it quiet now? Come on. Come on. Everybody say hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No. <laughs> no, but tithes and offerings is, shouldn't be done legalistically, right? Like, like we don't give because, oh, it's like a tradition. We don't give because, oh, you know, we're following some law or something. No, it's a principle of giving. You know, God is a giver. He gave his only begotten son. He gave everything, you know. So how much more can we give of what he has given us, right? So we know what tithe means. It's the tenth of all of our income, and our offerings is commanded on top of that. Uh, but we give through the grace of God. So when you give this morning, I want you to remind yourself. Come on, look at somebody. No, look at yourself and say, self, I'm a seed sower. And the Bible tells me, keep saying that, keep saying what I say. And the Bible tells me that he gives seed to the sower. Now, if you got too much seed in your hand, he can only fill it up but so much. But when you release seed into the work of God, he gives you more. Not just for the work of the ministry, but also for your life to take care of your needs and, and even gives you the desires of your heart. So all you got to do this morning is give with a cheerful heart. Give with a, a spirit of expectation and faith as we lift up this offering before the throne of God. Father, we thank you this morning for every seed sower in this house, Lord God. Father, I thank you that... As they release the seed into the ministry, into the work of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord God, that I ask that you would, you would bless them in ways they could never imagine, Lord God. We don't give to be blessed. We give because we are blessed. We don't give, Lord, grudgingly. We give cheerfully, Father. Father, this morning, we, we don't give out of necessity, even though we do have needs. It is written that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. So, Lord, we just simply, clearly say that we thank you in our giving. We give with thankfulness. We give with cheerfulness, Lord God. And we sow this seed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let the church shout amen. 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 Hallelujah. You may be seated. And if you have a physical offering, then our deacon will be standing by the door on your way out. And you can drop that physical offering into that basket in Jesus' name. Now. Minister Deweese is about to come up here and bless our socks off. I'm taking my shoes off. I'm taking my coat off. So if I feel like running, don't judge me. Uh, if I feel like shouting in my socks, I'm just going to do that. Because I got a six, seven hour ride in front of me. So I got to exercise now. Stretch it out a little bit. But I know he got a word. And so before I give you this word, uh, God gave me something in my studies. I've been doing a deep study on Jacob and... Um, I got a revelation last night, and I just was like, oh, my gosh. And all I'm going to say, and I, I don't know what God's going to do with it. Maybe this is just for one person. Maybe it's for all of you. See, I got to come out my jacket already. But, uh, so Jacob, Jacob, when he uh, ran from Esau, you know, because he stole his brother's birthright, and he ran from Esau, and he goes into the land, 
uh, where Laban was, and he sees Rachel work seven years to marry her, and then ends up, I don't know how that happened. I mean, you must have celebrated really hard not to know that was not the wrong person. Like, like Leah, he married Leah versus Rachel. So he woke up in the morning like, hold up, you Leah. Like, what happened there? So he had to work seven more years to get Rachel. And then after the seven years, Laban still didn't want to let him go. The Bible says in the text that after, after God um, put this blessing on uh, um, Jacob's life and the flock he had multiplied while Laban's flock decreased, God increased him so rapidly that he had to, he had to leave. But in the, in the scripture, in the Hebrew text, it means that, he, that he, had to have, he had to have a breakaway. He had to break away from the decisions that constricted him. Oh, God. He had to break away from the things he did that set him up in, for, the, for the condition that he was in. He had to break away from, from what he did from Esau. He had to break away from Laban. He had to get out of that situation. And it was an intentional decision that when he broke away, God blessed Jacob. Turned his name to Israel. And I want to let you know, and I don't know where this is going this morning, but this is just for somebody, that your breakaway is today. You have to make the decision, but your breakaway from everything that has constricted you and held you to a place, oh my God, that has held you to a certain specific uh, lifestyle, whatever it may be, whatever your breakaway is, God ain't going to do it for you. God said, you got to make the decision and break away. And when you make the decision, watch this, God's going to bless you so much to where you don't have any choice but to move in the direction God is. In other words, look at your neighbor and say, you're going to have to pivot. This is the year of the pivot. So you got to break away from some stuff. And let me tell you something. Some of the stuff you got to break away from, you've been comfortable with for a while. But baby, you better break away and break away fast because God is about to do something in your life that you've never experienced before. You're going to break away and you're going to have an experience with God. You're going to break away and you're going to have an experience with Oh, and you're going to break away and your children are going to have an experience with God. The experiences that you want to see upon your child is depending upon your breakaway. Do you mind? Can I take two, three more minutes? Just two or three more minutes. And then, I, and then you're going to come up here and fire it up. I just got to, just got to, just got to, just got to, I just got to release this. I want to, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Go to my notes. Lord Jesus. Look at somebody say, break away. Break away. Break away. Break away. Break away. There we go. There we go. There we go. Almost there. I got so many notes from this. There it is. So when you break away, watch this. Something going to try to follow you. And it's going to be undercover. I don't know. It's a prophetic moment. Something will try to follow you undercover. Rachel took her father's idols. Okay? Oh, and we all got idols. Come on now. If we really search our hearts, I hate to say it, even Christians are kind of idolizing things that we shouldn't. So Rachel stole her father's idols, put them under the camel saddle that she was sitting on, and... And when, 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 when J- Jacob never discovered the idols until, um, until they came chasing after him. Because when you carry stuff that shouldn't be with you, the enemy follows. When you, when you break away, you have to break away from everything. Jacob broke away from everything but did not realize that his wife was carrying something along with her, attached to the enemy. She snuck the idols in, sat on it, and blamed the... Uh, blamed didn't blame it, but she covered it up with her, this is going to sound kind of crazy, but just go with me, with her menstrual cycle. So she was sitting on the saddle of the camel, and she would not move off the saddle of the camel because she told him, like, I'm on my cycle. I know, I'm sorry, we don't talk about that, but that's okay. You're learning something. And so that's how Jacob did not know. 
But watch this further. I, you know, so the, the story goes is Laban chases them down with the, because he's looking for the idols, right? But he really wanted Jacob back. But he was chasing them down, uh, found out. Jacob finds out that, that his idols were stolen. Jacob was like, whoever stole them are going to die. He didn't know he was talking about his wife. That's why I break away. You got, when I'm telling you, you got to break away. It can't just be you breaking away. It got to be both you and your spouse. It got to be your whole family. You got to break away and really separate yourself from the things that have constricted you from walking in your purpose and your destiny. Y'all following? I'm almost done. And then this man going to preach and we're going to throw shoes and we're going to run and we're going to receive what thus saith the Lord. But here's a prophetic release to you. So what happened, watch this, was that, that Rachel actually died on her way back. However, watch this. To show you how great God is, in the book of Leviticus, it lets us know that if, if a woman sits on anything during that cycle, it is called unclean. Wow. 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 <laughs> y'all can't, this is too deep for y'all. She was sitting on the idols. There is no other God besides the Lord. And so any idol that tries to creep into your life, he will prove to us that they are unclean and undone any, any way he can. And so you got to break away from some stuff this morning that, that you can separate yourself. Come out from among them. Come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. I need a holy people. I need a people that are willing to stand up for righteousness. And go before God in prayer. And let him change your life. And God going to deal with the idols that try to creep in with you. God know how to deal with the stuff that we have a problem of letting go of. He will expose it. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, now let's get ready to receive the word. I bring to you a man who had a heart transplant. Many, many years before he had the physical one. I don't know what day and what time exactly it was when he got filled with the Holy Ghost. But that was his first heart transplant. God took his old stony heart and gave him a heart, hallelujah, after God. And then later on down the line, he had some physical heart issues and the Lord blessed him. And yes, I'm telling your testimony, but, you, but it's just because I know it so well from what you shared is that, that he had to get a heart transplant and, 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 the, and the young heart they put in him has been beaten well ever since. Why? Because he has a purpose. Why? Because he has a mission and that mission is not complete. And so that's why he's here today. He will do what God will do whatever he got to do to keep you here until your time is up. And when our time is up, look at somebody said, just be ready. Amen. So we welcome to the front minister, James DeWeese. Let's receive him at this time. And the word of God with a hearty amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. I said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Pastor, you made it so much easier for me. <laughs> you know, I don't get up often, but when I do get up, I know God has a word to speak to the people of God. And I tell you, the spirit of the Lord is flowing in this place today. Amen? Amen. I mean, God's presence is here. And so first, I love to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For it's in him that I live, move, and have my being. And I realize that I would not be here today. And I'm not just saying this because it's a cliche. I really do realize that, that I would not have been here today if it hadn't been for the Lord. So, Justin, let me have that water right there. I'm going to do Minister Tucker's moment. Because right when I stood up here, my mouth got dry. Hold on one second. <laughs> and so I know that the, the devil is mad because he tried to dry my mouth up. <laughs> but I just give God praise for allowing me to be here today. 
I thank God for my pastor and my lady Ty, Pastor Abraham and Lady Ty. I truly thank God for you. And, and it is so awesome because, you know, this pastor and, and his wife does not mind sharing the, the pulpit and the stage. They don't mind allowing us to use what, give what God has blessed us to have. And so I truly appreciate that, Pastor Abe and Lady Ty. Thank God for you. And I do want to recognize my wife. Uh, she's not here today. Uh, she would have been here, but her mother is not feeling well. So please, please lift them up in prayer. Um, we believe that she's healed already. But we just, we appreciate your prayers. And uh, we just celebrated 32 years of marriage. And those of you that's been together for, with your spouse for a long time, that is an honor to be able to hang in there, stick it out. Not just because you feel like you love, but you know you love when you hang in there like that. So I just give God praise for my wife. And, uh, you know, I just, we, we're looking forward, if God's will, Looking forward for another 32 years, if it's if, if, if his will. And uh, thank God for my son, Justin, for being here today. And I want to give God praise for my father for being here today, Deacon DeWeese. Thank God for you coming today. Appreciate your support. And uh, I do have another friend that's, that took some time, and he decided to come on in and celebrate along with me. I celebrated four years this year. He celebrated six years of a heart transplant. That's Brother Elliot. We thank God for you, Brother Elliot, for coming in today and, and supporting us today. So, you know, God is such an awesome God. It is just so awesome. I feel like, I really do feel like running. You said running, I feel like running. Because when I think of what God has done, and when I think of where he's going to, what he's going to do, it just gives me that joy, that joy, this unspeakable joy. So let's go ahead. We're, gonna, we're not going to prolong the time. Let's go ahead. Let's have a prayer. And let's go ahead into the word. Heavenly Father, if you don't mind standing up with me. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you right now for just allowing us to stand before your people. And so, Father, as I decrease, I pray that you increase with your anointing. Father, I need you to touch the hearts. I need you to touch the minds of the people. I need you to encourage through this message. And I know that you're going to do this, and I give you praise. I give you glory, and I give you the honor that's due to you. And it's done in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So this little song that I have in my mind, it says, What God... As for me, it is for me. What God has for me, it is for me. I know without a doubt that He bring me out what God has for me it is for me it is for me it is for me what God for me it is for me do I have any witnesses out there hey I know without a doubt that he will bring me out what God has for me what God Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe that, why don't you praise him? Why don't you praise him? Why don't you glorify him? 
If you believe that what God has for you, it is for you. Hallelujah. And the devil can't do anything about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need you to open up your Bibles with me to Mark, the 11th chapter. Hallelujah. The 22nd verse. Hallelujah. And we're going to read through the 24th verse. Hallelujah. Mark, the 11th chapter, 20 through, 22 through 24. Amen. And it reads, and you will see it on the screen. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Amen. So my topic for today, and I believe Pastor was on that same wavelength, so we are on the same wavelength as far as people receiving what God has for them. So my topic is, it's mine because I believe God. Hallelujah. It's mine because I believe God. So my question to you today is, what is your mind? What is your mind? It doesn't matter what the situation is. It doesn't matter if it's sickness. It doesn't matter what kind of disease, whatever is attacking your body, whatever is attacking your mind. It doesn't matter what it is. The Bible says you are healed. The Bible says you are healed. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. What is your mind? Whatever it is, you might say it's, it's, it's dealing with your finances. You might say it's dealing with your family. You might say it's dealing with your job. Well, my question to you, is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? Do I have any believers in here that knows what happens if you believe in God? That you, do you really know what happens if you believe in God? Hallelujah. What are you saying when you say you truly believe in God? You are saying that your actions or your works uh, testify to your faith or belief in God. And in the book of James, the second chapter, 17 through 18, he expressed, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead. Being alone. Yea, a man might say, thou hast faith. And another man might say, I have works. And I'm telling you to show me your faith without thy works. And I will show you my faith by my works. So in keeping this in mind, if we say we believe in Jesus, meaning we have our belief and our actions, our works are speaking, then we would, be, we would not be overwhelmed by sickness. Why? Because we already know that God is our healer. Amen? If we believe by our actions, we would not be dismayed by the loss. Because why? He is our redeemer. If we believe by our actions, we would not be intimidated by the giants of the wilderness of this life. Why? Because we know that he is our shield and our refuge in the time of trouble. Our belief or faith in God is merely a faith walk, according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, which reminds us that we're not just walking by what we see. We're not walking by what we see. This is what throws many people off track because you get caught up on, this is if your faith is low now, you get caught up on what you see and then if you can't see it, then you just don't believe it. However, those of you that have tapped into the power of the Holy Ghost, you know that without a shadow of a doubt that because of your faith in God, 
it shall come to pass. It doesn't matter what you see, but it's what you know through the power of the, of the, of the Holy Spirit. I personally have walked down some shaky roads. And Pastor explained it today. One of them was dealing with a heart transplant. That was very shaky. However, that wasn't the only shaky road in my life. I have had many, many, many trials and tribulations along the way. But you know what? Because I believed in God, and I, I, I'm going to say it. It's not because I'm perfect, but I have crazy faith in my God. And because I believed in God, what he did was he allowed me not to see things through my naked eyes, but he allowed me to see things through the eyes of Jesus. And because I was able to see things through the eyes of Jesus, when I faced my trials, I began to say things like, I shall not die, but I shall live. I shall declare the works of the Lord. Greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I will not allow the enemy to discourage me or take me down the road of negativity, neglect, and stress. These are the thoughts that I said because I believe God. And I believe that it was mine because I believe God. And you know what? Because of that, I am standing here today. Do I have any witnesses out there that believe God and know that it's yours? The word of God has so many witnesses. I mean, we can go through from Genesis all the way to Revelation. But I have a few witnesses that I like to pull on. And one of them is young David. How many of, how many of you know about David? David was a young shepherd. And he overheard Goliath talking smack about the people of God. And how many of you know that didn't set well, well with David? That didn't set well with him. You, you can witness to that, right? If so, you and your brother may have had fights. You and your sister may have had some fights. But you let somebody come in and start talking smack about them. You ready to put your guard up, right? So David, didn't, he didn't like what they were saying about uh, the people of God. And so he went to the king. And he was crazy enough to believe that God was going to deliver him out of fighting that giant. And he went to the king. He said, giant, I mean, he said, King Saul, the same God that removed the paw of the lion and removed the paws of the bear is the same God that's going to deliver me out of the hands of this giant. And it happened. It happened. And it didn't take much. It didn't take much. It just took crazy faith and a little slingshot and a pedal pebble and threw it at that devil and knocked the crazy out of him until he <laughs> that's one example another I've got another example I've got another example I'm talking about Shadrach Meshach and Abednego hallelujah you know about him them they were standing in front of a fiery furnace and they had crazy faith just enough to believe that the God they serve was going to deliver them out of that furnace can you imagine, does any one of you out there have a fiery furnace that you're standing in front of right now? You don't have to tell it, but you know you got a fiery furnace. How crazy is your faith that all you have to do is believe God and he's going to bring you through? They told the king that even if God did not deliver them out of that furnace, that we believe that he still is able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that's the kind of faith that we have to have even today. It's not about what we see. We have to know that God is able. And if he doesn't deliver us on this side, then he will deliver us in glory. You have to have that kind of mindset. I got one more witness. I'm talking about the centurion soldier. We're going to go into New Testament. The centurion soldier. Now, this soldier wasn't even a Jew. He was a Gentile. So that God gave me insight with that, that there is no respect of person. It doesn't matter who you are. All you have to do is believe. That's all you have to do. And that man believed to the point where he told Jesus, you don't even have to come. I know you've been laying hands on everybody. You've been, you know, calling everything out on everybody. But you don't even have to come to my house 
All I want you to do is speak the word. And Jesus was so overwhelmed. He was overwhelmed. This man has some strong faith. And you know what? That's what triggered, that's what triggered Jesus. Understand that God told us in his word that without faith, it's impossible to please God. But this man had some strong faith. All he wants you to do, saints, is believe. It's not that hard. Just believe. Now, I'm going to tell you what it takes to do that. But I do have one more testimony to tell you. And this is about my nephew, my nephew, my niece's son. Little Brock, he, he's went through a lot of challenges. Went through a lot of challenges. But me and my dad was uh, at the hospital th the day that they were talking about some of his challenges. And he, they said he only had one kidney. Now, this is added to all of his other heavy challenges. One kidney. So we went to the doctor, and we had a conversation with the doctor. We said, Doc, is that kidney going to grow back? Because, you know, I've never heard, you know, someone being born with, the, with one kidney. And the doctor told me not that kidney was not going to grow. And that, well, that right there is what triggered me. When he said, no, it's not going to grow. And then she said that it was not a he, it was a she. She said, out of the 12 years that I've worked in this uh, med medical field, I have never seen it happen. Okay, look at that. One kidney. I'm dealing with people in the professional field that have told me that this kidney was not going to grow. So if I looked at that through my eyes, I, all I would have had to do was just walk but something triggered in my spirit that God was going to make this person into a lie, make this situation into a lie. Something triggered. And I know my father was praying. Like I said, we believe we have some crazy faith. We've seen God do some crazy things. And I took my finger and I touched his little feet. His feet was about that small. And I touched his little feet. And I said, God, this is not about me, but I need your glory to be revealed. I need you to, I need you to do it right now, Jesus. And I didn't start jumping up and down and, you know, huck a and all of that stuff in there. I didn't start all of that. But the spirit of the Lord was within me. And two weeks, two weeks later, my, my family was at, we were at Outback. And we were eating. And uh, I get a call from my niece, Tangi. And she said, Uncle Jay, can you talk for a second? And I said, yes, I can talk. She said, you know, I had, uh, I had they, they did, did, did the checks today on, on Brock. And uh, the technician said, you know, he looked, looked from his head to his feet and said, you know, we talked about it. He sees the liver. He sees all of the organs. And he says, I see on the left side, I see the kidney. And on the right side, I see the other kidney. And so she said, hold up. Hold up. I just need to make sure of what you just, what you told me just now. Did you just tell me that you see two kidneys? And he came back. He said, listen, I, I know exactly what I'm looking for. I see one kidney on the left. And another kidney on the right. Wow. And when she said that I'm inside uh, Outback, yeah. I had to jump up. I jumped up out of Outback. And I said, Lord, you just showed me that your glory, even in any situation, can be revealed. And you showed me that it can be revealed in this situation. I ran out of Outback. And that time I did give God the Hakamashunda and everything that went along with it because, because my little faith and my father's faith, those that believe, that's all it took. Belief. The belief that that kidney was going to be formed. Now, this child has went through and is still going through challenges, but God said, I'm still in the midst of it. I'm still there. 
What is your mind? What is your mind? And Matthew 17, 17 and 20, it lets us know that if you have faith. Okay, it didn't say if the apostles, the bishops, the pastors, the missionaries, the deacons. It didn't give titles. It just says if you have faith. The size of a grain of mustard seed. So guess what? That means it doesn't have to be a lot of faith. It doesn't have to be big. That triggers Jesus. You can say to whatever it is, whatever mountain, whatever tree, whatever situation that's in front of you, you can speak that thing to be moved. You can do it. But if you believe... Can I get you to believe today with me? Can I get you to believe in the impossible? I mean, really, not just say it. Not just say it. Now, I'm going to let you know how you can do this because sometimes, you know, people feel that, well, I just can't, I can't do it. I can't. Let me tell you how you can do it. The relationship that you have with God, with Jesus. It's important. This is a great example. If you don't see a person and you can't see who they are, you can't see what they can do, it's hard for you to understand who that person is, right? If you don't see that person. God wants you to take time with him. He wants you to dine with him. He wants you to, 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 to have that personal relationship with him. Now, he came that we may have life and that more abundantly. He came that we have life that more abundantly. That means not just in heaven, but while we are here on earth. That's why he sent a comforter. And this comforter is supposed to lead and direct and give you insight. It's that relationship that you're having. You're able to feel the presence of God. Through the comforter. What is the comforter? It's the Holy Ghost. And he says, after you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall have what? Power to do what? Power to heal. Power to deliver. Power to set free. Power to speak to those devils and tell them by the blood of Jesus, you leave. You have the power through the Holy Ghost. Now, this is the way that you can have this relationship with God. And if you don't have it today, I admonish you to really seek him like never before because you're missing out. You're missing out on all of the blessings that God has promised you. I'm not just talking about the, the little things being healed from a headache and or, you know, you got a little bit of money here and there. I'm talking about if you seek him first, like the scripture said, and hold his word accountable, that everything else you desire shall follow. I am a witness of that. I am a witness of that, and I know I got other witnesses in here that know who God is. So I'm going to ask you the question again, what is your mind? And if I can get you to really think about that situation that mind, that thing that seems to be impossible. And if I can just get you to reach out right now like you've never done before and give God a Shabbat praise for the victory that you're going to receive and give him like, give him a praise like you know, like you know, like you know that you're going to receive. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you know. You know about it. You know what I need. I believe. I believe in your power. I believe in your spirit. I believe in your Holy Spirit. Jesus, do it. Not through my eyes, but through your eyes. I said through your eyes. I am healed through your eyes. 
I am delivered through your eyes. I am set free through your eyes. I have everything I need. It's no lacking here through your eyes. You're going to bring my family back together. It's through your eyes. You're going to work that situation out. It's through your eyes. You're going to bring my son back home. You're going to bring my daughter back home. It's through your eyes. Hallelujah. 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 I don't think we're radical enough. I don't think we're radical enough. Hallelujah. Whatever attack on your body, whatever attack on your body, it doesn't matter if it's just your mind, whatever attack on your body, in the name of Jesus, you are delivered. You are set free. Hallelujah. And you got to walk in it. Walk in it. Hallelujah. 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 I said it took me 65 days. It took me 65 days before I received a heart transplant. But every day before that day, I walked in what I knew God was going to do. I stood on his word. I didn't look backwards. Once I realized what I had to go through, I said I stood on the word of God. He told me that my lack, that my latter days were going to be better than what I was going through right then. He told me, and I begin to speak the word. I said, I'll begin to speak the word. Hallelujah. I couldn't go by what I saw because I didn't understand what I saw. But I went by what I knew. I said, I knew Jesus. I said, I knew Jesus was a way maker. I said, I knew Jesus was a heart fixer. I said, I knew Jesus was a healer. I said, I knew Jesus was going to work that thing out. Hallelujah. And just like you, that's why I got to praise. That's why I got to praise. I said, I got to praise. Hallelujah. 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 I can't sit down on what God has done. I said, I can't sit down on what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So can you just get radical with me right now? Come on, give me a drum beat. Give me a drum beat. Let's just get radical right now. And if you don't know how to shout, you can just jump. And if you don't know how to jump, you can cry. And if you don't know how to cry, you can wave your hand. But let's just get radical for the Lord. Hallelujah. I need you to praise him. 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 Lift your hand. Lift your mouth. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Let everything. If you got prayer, praise him. 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 Rip your hands. Praise him. Rip your feet. Praise him. 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 Put those hands together. I want y'all to know one thing. Hallelujah. When David went to praise the Lord, 
he went radical because he knew what God was going to do and he knew what God has done and I know sometimes you think well you know what it don't take all of that but you know what living in the world that we're living in today it takes that and more hallelujah so I want you to do it I said I want you to do it I want you to close your eyes and begin to give God praise for what you want him to do for you I said close your eyes and meditate on him and praise him for what you want him to do for you hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you. I said, Lord, we praise you. I said, Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I said, my God is worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. 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 You praise him. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I praise you. Yes, Lord. Yes, I do. 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 I praise you. 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 Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Hallelujah. praise hallelujah hallelujah lifting up your hands hallelujah lifting up your hands heavenly father we just give you praise right now jesus hallelujah we praise you god because we know that you're going to do it we know that you're going to do it you're going to let your glory be revealed in whatever that situation is in their life we're going to let your glory be revealed and they're going to come back and testify of your goodness So, Father, we stand on your word. I said we stand on your word. Hallelujah. You said if we have faith. Hallelujah. If we just have faith. Hallelujah. We can have whatever we desire. And, Father God, we believe. We believe. Hallelujah. It's mine because I believe. I said it's mine because I believe. I said it's mine because I believe. Yes, Lord, standing on your word, and it's done in Jesus' name. It's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let everybody say it's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so awesome. I said it's so awesome. Hallelujah. So at this time, hallelujah, we thank you all. We believe that you're going to receive what God has for you today. Hallelujah. And we're going to stand on that faith with you. We're going to stand on the same accord with you. Hallelujah. So right now we're going to shift. 
We're going to shift the atmosphere. Keep your praises. Keep your worship. We're going to shift the atmosphere because now we're getting prepared for communion this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you have your scripture, your Bible, you can open up your Bible with me to 2 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can open up your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians 12, 23 through 24. Hallelujah. No, that's wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got that a little twisted. Got my glasses off. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through, 20, through 34. Now I can see. <laughs> All right. I got my glasses off because they're going to get fog up on me right now. So, yes, 2 Corinthians. So from 11, the 11th chapter, the 23rd through 34th fourth verse. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, meaning you just don't understand and you don't believe, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. So we thank the Lord for the reading of the word. So we understand our purpose here, that we are eating and drinking this bread and we're drinking this uh, wine, whatever you have in your cups. Those of you that are unsure, they're behind the chairs. If you look behind the chairs, you see the little packet of, of uh, the communion packet. Yes. So we understand that as we're eating the bread, amen, pastor. <laughs> You're going to come up front? Yeah, the family. We're going to call the family up front, and uh, we're going to go ahead, and we're going to have. So just understand, those of you that have your top, the top of your packet, it has the bread. You could pull the bread out if you're taking the communion. And we understand that this bread, it represents the Lord's body. And we should do this in remembrance of him until he comes. Amen? Amen. So all of you that have your bread, eat your bread. represents the blood of Jesus and we should do this as well until he comes and as we're taking this we should be thankful hallelujah that he bled and died for us suffered bled and died for us
Hallelujah. Come and quench. What do you want him to do? Fill my cup. Fill my cup. Fill it up. And make me whole. Hallelujah. Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for, for how you gave your life for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You did it for us. It, it should have been us. Amen. But he stood in place for us. Amen. So before we before we close, before we close, you know, close the service, we want to open up the service. There may be someone today that haven't really understood who Jesus is. And you like to understand, you like to give your life to him, you want to be baptized. We're going to open up the floor for you to come if you are looking to be baptized in Jesus' name. floor is open if you want to be baptized. Amen. Amen. So just if you're thinking about it, just know that it's always available. Baptism is always available. There may be someone that wants to give your life to Christ today. Wants to receive God in your life and you, you want to be prayed for. The floor is open for you today. Maybe you want to know more about the Holy Spirit and understanding how to receive him. The floor is, the floor is open for you today. Fill my cup and make me whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming today. Let's give all of our guests and everyone a hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think I have Elder Tony trying to. Yeah, I want Pastor Abraham to come. Amen. Bless you. We always pray for our leader. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. On their trip. I mean, no, that prayer changes things. Perfect. I don't know what you heard. There was a major accident on 95 mm -hmm. yesterday. Crazy. And we're going to ask God to bless. Come on, Come on First Lady. Amen. And the children. The more we speak over our leaders of protection. Let me see the hand of you. If you ever be... You pray before you even start up your car. Say, Lord, protect me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It don't, have to be, it don't have to be your <laughs> fault. It can be some drunk driver just going about his business. But we have special jewels here. Yeah. We want them to go have a great time. But how I many you know you want them back yeah. to the Hallelujah. house? Oh, yeah. In Jesus' name. Everybody just point your hand right there. Father, Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Keep your angels of protection round about the Abraham and his family and even the people of God that is here. Keep us in protection from hurt, harm, and danger. Every disease, every foe that come against us, we bind it and we cast it in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Jesus. You have no authority over us. None. Satan, every power. Lord. You have no authority over Hallelujah. us. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Even the Johnson's family. We speak healing. We speak deliverance. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. In
in Jesus' name. Keep your angels in camp around about us. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And we'll forever give you all the praise. Protect this church. Yes. The structure. Keep the angels of God around about this promise. With your flaming swords. And you will fight our battle. You'll be a battle axe in the time of battle. We give you all the praise and honor in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hey, Thank man. You. Hallelujah. We appreciate them prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Amen. I um, prayed for Mother Hamilton's uh, anointing oil. So where's she at? Is she here? She in the back there? All right. All right. I'm going to go give it to her real quick. I want to personally deliver to you. Anoint your body. Anoint your home. Anything God will tell you to anoint, anoint that thing and be consecrated unto the Lord. Jesus, keep me near yes, Pastor Abe. the cross. There's a friend just found. I'm chin. 